okay so i think uh, the audio seems fine okay so this is lecture 21 okay and the last thing we saw was construction of a regular ldpc matrix right galaga's construction for a regular ldpc matrix uh, let me quickly remind you how this is done if you have an omega c omega r regular if you would like to construct an omega c omega r regular regular ldpc matrix okay and if you have <coughs> wr dividing the block length n then it's very easy to divide your parity check matrix into wc sub matrices right so that's what you do you divide it into h1 h2 so on till hwc okay each matrix is 1 comma wr regular okay that's how each matrix was right am i right each matrix each of the sub matrices has column weight 1 and row weight wr so if you put one below the other the overall matrix will have this k will be wc wr and for this you need wr to divide n otherwise it won't work so smoothly <coughs> okay what is the number of columns here n over wr okay so how do you construct h1 h1 has a very simple structure like this okay right just put once in a step wise fashion you get that okay you put wr once put n over wr of them you'll cover the entire block length n okay so this is the this is galagas construction okay so let's move on and see an example i'll take a really really simple example an example where the matrix will clearly not be low density okay be a very high density matrix but i want to take a small block length n because once block length becomes very large it just becomes very difficult for me to keep writing down these huge matrices okay so <coughs> as an example suppose i take n equals 8 and i want a 3 comma 4 regular matrix okay okay can we do galagher construction is galagher's construction feasible for this parameters yeah 4 divides 8 right go ahead and try just write down h1 i'll write a specific h2 and h3 okay write down h1 alone what will be the dimension of the matrix overall dimension Six by eight, right? Six by eight. Okay. Okay. So the first row will be one 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 one. Okay. I leave out the zeros. They're a little bit distracting. If I if I leave a position blank, it means it is zero okay so i leave out the zeros this will be my first row okay maybe i'll need maybe i'll need to keep this a little bit open okay my second row i'll just pick to be this way okay so this is some people might argue this is not random enough i'll agree with them but it's easy for me to write down okay it's just an example This is a valid H2. There's nothing wrong with that H2. It's a permutation of the columns of H1. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. The next one I'll pick as one 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 one. Okay. That's the construction for you. <coughs> okay. Clearly, this is not the only matrix right you have so many others maybe some of them will be repetitions okay so you can't just blindly do total number of permutations times total number of permutations again right that's not possible because some things will repeat okay there are some permutations which will not give you distinct numbers but 
maybe one can compute it maybe it's not very relevant to even compute it but this is one matrix in the ensemble okay this is how you go about doing it so you see this is already a 6 by 8 matrix okay if i were to even do for n equals say 12 it automatically al already becomes what a 9 by 12 matrix okay so it becomes very difficult for me to write down and, and you kind of miss the picture there okay this is very simple uh, thing to write down for this 6 uh, 6 6 6 by 8 case 3 4 regular okay if you want a 3 6 regular code then you'll have to go to a really larger n okay so you have to go to at least n equals 12 and uh, maybe for that it's it's it will work out in a reasonable fashion okay so those are those are examples you can cook up examples like this and in practice real examples will come only for large n okay and for large n i can't really write down you have to write a matlab program it's easy to write a matlab program to do this construction for large n right you pick that n first matrix is easy to write down in matlab you can write it down in few comments then matlab has a rand perm command which is just random permutations of 1 to n to reorder the columns of h1 that also is very easy to do in matlab so you can write a very quick click like, three or four line matlab program to generate a random instance of a matrix from this ensemble okay this is easy enough okay any questions on how i did it mm, well think about it think about it. so is he is asking questions about counting the total number of matrices with in this construction is there what you asking yeah i mean it's, it's uh, i don't know if it's a very trivial calculation to do but you might be able to do it. Okay. <coughs> I don't know. Let me see. Maybe that's the way of counting it. I'm not sure. I'm not. I'm not thought seriously about the counting. Could be possible. Okay. So there's another structure associated with par associated with parity check matrices, which is very crucial for LDPC codes to study. decoding over ldpc codes in fact to study even other constructions there is a structure associated with this parity check matrix that that is what's known as the tanner graph and uh, this is what we'll see next in fact to study the next construction that we need the we need to understand what tanner graphs are okay the the there's one more construction which i've been talking about what's called the socket construction So we should know a little bit about tanner graphs before we go into the socket construction so tanner graph is basically a graphical representation of a parity check matrix okay so graph don't think of sin x versus x or something that's not the graph i'm talking about this is the graph theoretic notion of graph okay so you have a bunch of nodes which are connected by edges okay so that that if you you can it turns out you have a very nice representation for a parity check matrix as a graph as in fact what's called a bipartite graph it's not so crucial to us but anyway so a bunch of nodes which are connected by edges so that's graph okay so what is a graph nodes connected by edges okay for us the nodes okay in the tanner graph the nodes will correspond to columns and okay so maybe the parity check matrix is h columns and rows of h okay and the edges will correspond to <coughs> the ones in h okay so that will be the correspondence okay so you'll see how it's done it's a very simple uh, representation i'll make a copy of this guy here just to show you okay so that's my parity check matrix so <coughs> how does my graph look like i said i need nodes for the columns and <coughs> rows of h the rows of h are also called checks right so parity checks 
that the each row of h is a parity check that the code word has to satisfy right we saw that before okay so so i'll put nodes corresponding to the columns on the left hand side okay i'll show the tanagraph construction for this example the general case is also very similar there's really no no no, no need for de defining it in general okay so how many columns do i have i have eight columns so i need eight nodes corresponding to the columns 4 5 6 7 and 8 okay those are my eight nodes maybe i number them 1 2 okay so the columns i guess i number number them like this okay <coughs> so those are my eight column nodes okay nodes corresponding to columns okay so and then i need nodes corresponding to the rows which are the checks okay how many of them do i have six i have six rows 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 and for those nodes i'll i'll put squares okay just to just to distinguish them you can put circles if you know in your mind what are columns and rows but put squares just for convenience okay So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, and to make it a little bit symmetric, I'll I'll move these guys around. That's better, right? Okay, so that's better. <coughs> okay, so those are my. check notes and maybe i'll number them i'll number 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay so you see just to illustrate how intuitive the tanagraph is what do you think we can do how do you think we should connect up the edges connect up the nodes with edges yeah so you put the edge there so you see that it's, it's quite intuitive if there is a one corresponding to a particular <coughs> at the intersection of a column and a row if there is a one connect those two nodes with with an edge that's all okay so do that i'm going to do it here on the screen so you can do it in your uh, wherever you are as well and check that we have made the right uh, connections it's not too difficult okay for the first check node go check node by check node it's slightly easier Okay, for the second one, I have five, six, seven, eight. I'm sure there's a smarter way to do these lines in this PC so that it's all straight lines, but I guess I'm not. Uh, uh, maybe I should learn that sometime. Okay, all right. So this goes to three. This goes to three. then i have 5 and 6 going to 3 okay eventually it's going to look a little bit messy but <coughs> there's no way to easily avoid that okay and then the last one one Three, five, and seven, eight, six, four, and two. Okay, so I've connected it up, and it looks looks quite dense. Okay, so it's it's so as I, as I told you, it's not really a sparse graph. So sparse matrix, right? There's too many ones there. Pick such a small block length. Once you make the block length very large, <coughs> you'll have very few edges. Okay, so it won't look so messy if you actually manage to draw it. Okay, but if you have thousands of nodes, it takes a long, it take too many pages. Probably there's no point in drawing it. You have to just visualize that such a graph will exist. Okay, so this is, this is the way Tanagraph is designed. So how do I do it in general? Just repeat the same thing. Just put one node each on the left side for each. column put one node each on the right side for each row 
and whenever there is a one that column and that row connect it up with an edge that's all ok. <coughs> so, this is the Tanner graph there are a few 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 notations few definitions. Uh, so, the Tanner graph represents the parity check matrix it is the same one and the same thing you either give the parity check matrix or the Tanner graph both are the same right you can go from one to the other it is no problem. So, likewise there are corresponding relationships ok. So, each column of the parity check matrix I can imagine represents is, is kind of related to the a particular bit of the code word right does that correspondence make sense can I say each column of the parity check matrix is related to that corresponding bit in the code word why h times c transpose is 0 when I do that h times c transpose what happens each each column gets multiplied by the corresponding bit. So, each of these columns kind of represent a bit ok I can think of it that way this 1 to 8 is actually the location of the 8 bits ok. So, likewise these nodes on the left hand side which represent columns are called bit nodes ok. So, these nodes are called bit nodes and uh, <coughs> ok I already made this comment each row of the parity check matrix actually represents a parity check ok a particular check for instance the first row tells you what what does the first row tell you in terms of c1 plus c2 plus c3 plus c4 is 0 modulo 2 right Th that is what the first row tells you likewise other rows also give you parity checks. So, these nodes on the right which represent rows of the parity check matrix are also called check nodes ok there is some terminology <laughs> here these bit nodes are sometimes also called variable nodes ok. Some people refer to them as variable nodes, but we will refer to them as bit nodes because ok well the edges are edges there is really no uh, nothing to nothing more to say that ok. <coughs> and then uh, such a graph ok. So, if you are little bit familiar with graph theory when you have when you can divide the set of nodes into two sets and every edge connects a node from one set to another set such a graph is supposed to be bipartite ok. So, this is a bipartite graph and uh, we really do not we use some properties maybe, but really we do not care too much about why it is bipartite, but <coughs> that is the graph ok. A few few computations and few more notations and definitions graph theoretic are the following ok. So, in my matrix each column had weight w c right that is how I define my regular matrix ok. So, the columns the weight of the column <coughs> in the matrix corresponds to something in the graph and that is the number of edges connected to the particular node ok. That number is called the degree of the node ok. If a node has 3 3 edges connected to it that number is that number 3 is called the degree of the node ok. So, so, so one can talk about a bit node degree. ok for regular graphs the bit all bit nodes will have degree equal to w c likewise what will be the check node degree equals w r ok. So, another computation if somebody were to ask you what is the total number of edges ok you can count it two ways right like we counted the number of ones in the parity check matrix you can count it two ways you can either go column wise or row wise it is either n times w c or n time or well, n, n w c by w r times w r is again n times w c. So, it is enough if you say n times w c ok. So, that is the number of edges ok that is also another correspondence. something like that we will come to it slowly you have to make sure degree you know there is some some non triviality there we will come to it <coughs> ok. So, that is the Tanner graph and uh, well at this point it does not seem that fantastic or even necessary ok. So, I have not done anything really new <coughs> the one non trivial thing that we need in the Tanner graph is what are called neighborhoods ok and that is a little bit difficult to define with the matrix alone ok one could define it with the matrix it is not that neighborhoods are difficult to define, but uh, 
but it's more natural and intuitive to define neighborhoods starting from the tanagraph okay so so that's that's where tanagraphs are very useful okay so once i define the neighborhoods and all that you'll see and the neighborhoods play a big role in the decoding okay so we'll define what those are soon enough okay that's why the tanagraph is very useful okay that's one thing and the other thing is most decoders for ldpc codes are described on the tanagraph okay you kind of do operations on the tanagraph okay so you think of the bits as being on the left hand side and the checks being on the right hand side and you use the checks and the bits together to do decoding on the tanagraph that's why the tanagraph is very very useful okay we'll come back to those things soon enough but for now i'll describe the socket construction which is described on the tanagraph i'll, de I'll define that first i'll describe that first and then we'll move on to these other properties of the tanagraph okay so what is the socket construction Okay, so it's due to Rudiger or Bonke and Thomas Richardson. Okay, so they played a very important role in the in the re, during the uh, in making LDPC codes really really popular. Okay, so they analyzed it very rigorously. They came up with a lot of theories. So they 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 were <coughs> very famous in the LDPC area. Okay, all right. So socket construction. How does it work? Suppose I want to construct N W C W R regular uh, L D P C codes. Okay, I'll define an ensemble for, for going about doing it. Okay, so think of it in terms of a tanagraph. So what do I want? I want to generate a tanagraph with N nodes on the left side, N W C by W R nodes on the right side. And n times W C edges, each node having degree W C on the left side and W R on the right side, right? So that's what that's what I want in terms of construction. The way to think about it is, keep imagine you have n nodes, okay? And imagine each node has W C sockets. Okay. <coughs> okay. So on the right side, again you have nodes and each node has how many sockets? WR sockets. Okay, remember there are N nodes here and there are WC sockets. There are N W C by W R nodes here and there are W R sockets. So what is the total number of what is what is the total number of sockets on the left side? N W C. What's the total number of sockets on the right side? N W C. This is the total number of edges, right? So now I'll imagine each node, each edge connected to socket, a particular socket. Okay, each edge I will imagine is connected to a <coughs> particular socket on the left hand side and a particular socket on the right hand side. Okay, is that clear? Each edge I will imagine is connected to a particular socket on the left hand side and a particular socket on the right hand side. How many sockets do I have? NWC on both sides. Okay, once I assign edges to all sockets, what will I have? The edges will actually give you a will give you what in terms of the sockets? They will give you a mapping from the left sockets to the right sockets. Okay, and what kind of a mapping will that be? It will be a bijection, right? It will be a one to one invertible mapping. Right? That's how I that's how the edges work. Right? Once I put down all the edges, I will get a one to one invertible mapping or a bijection from the left sockets to the right sockets okay so that is how i define my ensemble of codes i say every bijection from the set 1 to n nwc to itself will define a bipartite graph for me which will be a tanagraph of a ldpc matrix okay so that's how i start okay i start with pi being a 
mapping from what to what nwc to 1 to nwc being a bijection bijection or a permutation right in terms of numbers you can think of it as a pi as a permutation <coughs> it's the same thing okay now i'm going to number my sockets on the left hand side from 1 to w nwc similarly i can number the sockets on the right hand side from 1 to nwc again and then how will i connect the edges according to this bijection pi okay so and then what do you do i connect socket i okay in the lhs left hand side to socket what pi of i in rhs that's it that's my construction <coughs> okay yeah so there's no question about comparison between this and gallagher's construction yeah i mean your he's right i mean so gallagher's construction will be a subset of this construction okay and any code you get there will be a subset here and in fact this construction is possible whenever wr divides n times wc you don't need that other special constraint that wr should divide n you don't need that okay this will work in a general case okay so you put down the sockets will work there is one problem here though and let me see who's going to be the first to observe that there is a problem here which will not show up in gallagher's construction but there's a problem here what is the problem <coughs> think about it for a while sorry wr uh well uh, well no i mean the, I, I will i will fix wc and wr first i will say i, I have n wc and wr n is such that such a construction is possible and then i can go down and do this that is not the problem there is a more subtle problem let me see i'm sorry the linearly dependent you'll get in fact in gallagher's construction you'll definitely get linearly dependent rows think about it for a while if you look at gallagher's construction there will be at least one set of linear dependence okay you can guarantee that i don't care about linear dependence too much because my rate can only increase and it will not be too too much that's not the problem there's a more subtle problem here Okay, remember I'm allowing all kinds of bijections. So what will happen? I can have two edges connecting the same set of nodes, same two nodes, right? I've just imagined sockets in each node, right? I can have a bijection which connects the first socket to the first socket and the second socket to the second socket. But those two will be in the across the same node, <coughs> okay? So how will, how will I how will I relate that to the parity check matrix is a problem and when i relate that to the parity check matrix my column weight row weights will go for a toss okay so that is the problem there that is a it's a bit of a problem but it's not a real problem <coughs> the reason is all the regular ldpc codes are definitely included in this construction there is no regular ldpc code that will be left out in this construction but there will be these extra multi edge tanner graphs which don't really correspond to regular ldpc matrices but you will get something else <coughs> right right you'll get something else which is different so you can do one of two things you can either expurgate your set and throw away all these multiple edges or just have them there and say my list my set of ldpc codes okay corresponds to nwc wr tanner graphs obtained in this way okay and i maybe my matrices will not be regular i don't care Okay, maybe my matrices are not regular anymore, but I don't care. My set of LDPC matrices are defined by these tanner graphs. Okay, when I go back to the matrix, it may not be regular, but that's okay. I will live with that. You can do both, and you tend not to lose too much. Okay, <clears throat> the reason is you can show out of all the permutations that are out there, the permutations that give you multiple edges are very very small in number. As n becomes very large, those permutations become negligible. Okay, so if you do a random construction. enough number of times you will quickly get a permutation with no multiple edges so it's okay so in practice it's not a big deal <clears throat> okay so that's a slightly technical point and we can from now on we'll ignore that okay so we'll not worry about it i will say when i say nwc wr i'll mean the socket constructed set of tanner graphs okay so you can either think of it as 
having no multiple edges removing all those graphs with multiple edges or include them and include the corresponding parity check matrices also i am okay with both okay so my regularity will define will be defined only with respect to the graph i don't care about the parity check matrix and how it works <coughs> okay <coughs> and there are other ways of doing it is all kinds of all kinds of modifications are there on this construction but this is how it works any questions okay okay so but this construction is easy enough and it's difficult for me to give you an example of this construction i can go back and reinterpret the gallagher example i gave you in terms of this construction it's easy it's not too difficult i can tell you what is this permutation for that construction okay right maybe maybe you can spend some time and write down that permutation so it's not too difficult okay one can do that so it will work out in this way. <coughs> okay so that's the socket construction okay so now let's go back to the stana graph that we had and define these neighborhoods which are so crucial in the decoding process okay so that's what i'm going to do next okay let me copy the stana graph Okay, so this is my uh, example Tana graph. So this is an eight comma three comma four regular. Uh, let me say regular LDPC code. I mean, it's not it's not a big deal to make that uh, jump. Okay, so it will not be a eight comma six code. At best, it will be a it it will not be a eight comma two code. It will be a eight comma three code or something. Okay, so I have not really calculated the dimension exactly. So, right, it's parity check matrix is a six by eight matrix, so you would expect it to be at least a eight comma two code. In fact, there will be a linear dependence. You can go back and check that. Okay, so <coughs> it will be be less than that. Okay, so so this is my uh, this is my uh, Tana graph, and I'm worried about neighborhoods. Okay, so this neighborhoods <coughs> is actually it's also a graph theoretic concept okay so how do you think of neighborhood in practice a neighborhood is what is your neighborhood people who are close by okay so first thing you need before when you go to neighborhood is some notion of distance okay so now i want to think of the same distance in a graph okay suppose i look at the bit node 1 okay what will you say are in its immediate neighborhood <coughs> just a natural intuitive definition all the nodes that are immediately connected to it okay so that will be my notion of distance okay if i can go in one step what nodes can i go to along the edges that will be my immediate neighborhood okay neighborhood of depth 1 okay and then i'll have neighborhood of depth 2 which is the nodes that i can go to when i make two jumps okay what will be the neighborhood of depth 3 three jumps okay four jumps so on Okay, same thing is defined for each nodes. Okay, but now since this graph is bipartite, what will happen in the first jump? Neighbors of all bit nodes will only be check nodes because it's bipartite, right? So from here, if I jump from the left side, if I jump, I'll go to the right side only. What about neighborhoods? Neighbors of depth two? They'll all be bit nodes again. Okay, so one can do that. It's a simple thing. I can write it down formally in a long way, but you understand what I mean by neighborhood, right? So basically, you start from a bit node jump to all the neighbors and then from there jump to their neighbors then jump to their neighbors so on so on so on so forth you get neighborhoods at different depth okay it's a very simple intuitive concept okay and this is this one could define this even with respect to the matrix right but on a graph it's much easier all these jumps are very easy to describe on the graph on the matrix it's a little bit more uh, difficult okay so i'm not going to formally define the neighborhood i'm going to do it by example okay so i'll draw the neighbors of say bit one bit node 1 at depth 1, depth 2 and so on. Okay, So let's start. <coughs> okay, So suppose I start with bit node 1. Okay, What are its immediate neighbors? How many neighbors will it have? How many immediate neighbors will it have? 
WC, right? In which case it is 3. Okay. So you have what are the neighbors? 1, 3, and 5. Okay. So the sum I. Okay, this is my bit node 1 and I connect it to. If, if you want to distinguish between bit nodes and check nodes, you can either do the circle square thing or if you want to further distinguish, you can say B1, C1, C3, just so that you know, I mean, just use any notation you want. But I think circle and square is good enough. You can see the distinction. Okay, what this is, these are the neighbors at depth 1. What about depth 2? What are the neighbors of check node 1? 2, 3, 4. Why am I not including 1 again? It's already there. Okay, So don't jump back to the same thing. It's only, only go we'll look for other neighbors. You are not your own neighbor. Okay, So that's the philosophy here. Okay, Eventually you will see you might become your own neighbor. Okay, That's a bad thing. We will see. We will come to it. Okay, So 2, 3 and 4 are here. And for 3, what is it? 2, 5, 6. Am I right? Okay, so I'm going to write it down differently. Okay, so so remember, this is two, three, four. This is once again two. Okay, so in fact these two nodes are the same. Okay, maybe I can connect it this way. I'll simply write it in one more fashion. Okay, so two, five, six, and for five, what is it? Three, five, seven. Okay, so once again, you see you have repetitions. Okay, so these are at depth 2. Okay, so depth 2. Okay, <coughs> so you have repetitions. Don't worry about them. Just keep, uh, just keep doing it. Now I can keep proceeding. Okay, so if we keep proceeding, you'll see all kinds of things will happen, and the number of neighbors will keep on increasing. Okay. So now including repetitions, including possible repetitions, I want you to give me the number of neighbors at depth 1 in the general case. Okay, Suppose I take, instead of the specific case, in general if I take NWCWR uh, code, okay, number of neighbors at depth 1 for all nodes, right? all bit nodes, it is going to be equal to W. W R C check nodes. Okay, what about depth two? <coughs> w C times W R minus one. What about this will this will all be check nodes, right? This will be bits. Right? What about depth three? Including repetitions, okay. So forget about repetitions. I don't care about repetitions for now, okay. What will it be? WC times WR minus 1 times WC minus 1. Do you agree? Or is it only WC again? See, remember, each of these nodes are already connected to one check node. You'll have to only do R minus 1 always. Is that clear? No, no, no. Repetition is one thing, but you can't repeat your neighbors. See, why did I get WR minus 1 here? Because 1 has already been included. right? So likewise here, when I put down neighbors here, how many will I have? Yeah, How many will I have? I will have only 2, right? Do you see that? I will have only 2. Why? Because 1 is already there. Okay, So do not don't repeat that. Okay, Do not keep repeating that. Okay, So that, that repetition is not allowed. Okay. So if at all here down below if you get a repetition it's okay. Okay. So do that. You will get WC times WR minus 1 times WC minus 1 checks, right? So you can keep on doing this computation. Maybe you can write down a general formula for depth L as well. Okay, so you can keep on doing it. For a for every for a regular code, one can do it. <coughs> okay. So, and this picture looks exactly the same for every bit node. Okay, this structure, this number will be exactly the same, but the actual bits and checks will differ. Okay, but the structure will remain exactly the same. This neighborhood of each bit 
will look very similar this tree like structure no i mean not really tree like but know what i mean okay it will look exactly the same okay right but the actual number of the bit nodes will change but the picture will look very very similar okay that happens for the regular code it's no problem that happens because of regularity right see that's that's the reason why this happens okay that's one observation there are a few other observations that i want to make okay little bit tricky it will need your imagination a little bit okay suppose i have a repetition at depth 2 okay suppose i have the same node appearing at a particular depth here in this depth 2 you saw you had repetitions right same node bit node 2 same bit node 2 appeared here as well as here okay <coughs> wait let me let me go slowly i mean you can't say that's not the statement i want to make it's not true that everything following them will be the same okay because 2 is connected to 3 there 2 is connected to 1 here then this will be different that will be different okay it will change a little bit but so when will that happen that's the question when will you get a repetition at the particular depth okay so it seems like well you get it what, what do you think will happen and what is the what is the way of describing that is there any any anything that you can notice there why did we get that repetition what can we say that repetition will mean for the bipartite graph okay so it's a little bit difficult to imagine so the moment you got a repetition like this it means right so actually what what, are, what has happened in the bipartite graph I, I i have a i have an edge like this okay which means starting at 2 okay starting at 2 i can go to notice here maybe i'll do it with a different pen okay no color is here no okay so it means starting at 2 no 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 this is different i need okay maybe i'll pick this okay starting at 2 i can go to 1 and then from the first check node i can go to the first bit node and then from the first bit node i can come back to the third check node and from the third check node what can i do i can in fact come back to the same bit node 2 okay i wrote the same 2 here differently so what does that mean in the original graph what does it mean there is a loop or a cycle okay if moment you get a repetition somewhere it means in the original graph there was a closed loop or a cycle okay these things are called cycles in a graph okay so every time you have a cycle in the graph original graph you will get some repetition in the neighborhood at a certain depth okay okay so that's that's the notion here okay so remember when when i wrote down this neighborhood i <coughs> i repeated the bit nodes right this two i repeated once again here okay if i go back to the graph and then trace this in fact i can trace this in the graph also i'll show you how to trace this in the graph okay you got a repetition here no so you start at bit node 2 go to check node 1 and then go to bit node 1 then go to check node 3 and from check node 3 you can go back to bit node 2 and you see there is a loop there okay in the graph it seems to be crossing but there is a loop okay maybe we'll take one more example what other repetition is there 5 and 5 is repeating right so from 5 to 3 to 1 to 5 to 5 back again i should be able to get a loop let's uh, let's start that 5 to 3 maybe i'll look at a different color i'm sorry okay so from 5 to 3 well it became a really light color okay can you see it maybe yeah 5 to 3 and then from 3 to 1 okay then 1 to 5 <coughs> then 5 back to 5 notice that's another loop okay so every time you get a repetition at a particular depth you will get a closed loop or a cycle in the original graph okay is that clear so it's a very simple correspondence the way i made it now okay okay so that's the that's the first thing slightly non trivial observation that i want to make let me write that down repetition of nodes in neighborhood
implies and is implied by cycles in tanagraph. Okay, so both ways you can go. Okay, so the next thing is the next observation I want to make is something about the depth at which re re the repetition occurs. Okay, so here. Yeah, so so you'll see the depth at which the rec uh, the repetition occurs. You would imagine this a little bit carefully. Is related to the length of the cycle. What is the length of a cycle? Length of a cycle is number of edges in it. Okay, so here the repetition occurred at depth two, which means you will have four edges in your cycle. If the first repetition occurred at depth, depth, well, see the repetition bit node repetition can happen only at even depths, right? It can happen only at depth two or <coughs> depth 4 and so on but you can also have check node repetition before that okay so you can have some repetitions like that okay so if you will get repetitions at depth 2 if there is a length 4 cycle in the tanagraph you will get repetitions at depth 3 if there is a length 6 cycle in the tanagraph there cannot be a length 5 cycle in this bipartite graph right if you start at some point you can come back to it only after a even number of jumps that's because of the bipartite nature in general graphs it's possible but in bipartite graphs it will happen only after an even number of jumps and if there is in general if there is a length 2l cycle in the tanagraph there will be a repetition at depth l for every node involved in that cycle <coughs> right it's very easy to see that okay so <coughs> that's the next statement i'm writing it down well, it may not be very easy to see, but if you imagine that a little bit, you can see that. Okay, so length 2L cycle in tanagraph implies and is implied by repetition at depth L for nodes in that cycle okay it will happen for both check nodes or bit nodes if there is a uh, if there is a cycle the cycle will involve both check nodes and bit nodes right for each of those bit nodes and check nodes if you write down the neighborhood at depth l you will get a repetition okay so that has to happen imagine the cycle right so in your neighborhood you'll be going through the cycles also and you'll eventually come back okay so it requires a little bit of imagination but you can see the gave you some examples and you can see the correspondence from there <coughs> okay okay so the reason why i am talking about repetition is it will turn out later that repetition is bad for us we would like to have tanagraphs for which for which repetition happens only at very large depths okay you don't want repetitions to happen at depth 1 and depth 2 well depth 1 is very bad depth 2 and depth 3 and so on you don't want repetition. In fact, if there is multiple edges from a node to a other, you will get repetition at check at depth 1. You will have repetition at depth 1, right? So, all those things you don't want to happen, <coughs> okay? So, so again, I have not, I, 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 when I describe the decoder, it will be clear to you, okay? So, it is desirable not to have avoid short cycles. desirable to avoid short cycles because if you don't have short cycles you will not get repetition for for very low depths okay only for long depths will you get repetition okay so that's one thing is it possible in the regular construction it turns out for sparse matrices as n tends to infinity okay the number of uh, the number of repetitions is very very minimal okay it doesn't really happen there's a proper way of writing it down let me think about it and, and uh, write it down carefully okay so let me repeat the statement first and then write it down formally okay it turns out when you make n very very large for a particular wc and wr when you make keep on making n very very large it's very very unlikely that you will get repetitions in your neighborhoods okay right now it was just six and eight so you saw repetitions happen very quickly okay if you make your n very very large block length is very very large you will see you will hardly see repetitions in your neighborhood up to depth 2 3 4 so on there will be not much repetition if at all there is a repetition there will be only repetition for very few nodes not for too many nodes okay 
so that's that's a that's a good thing that you can prove okay for large n things get better your neighborhood avoids repetition okay if if there is no repetition <coughs> then that's good for you i've not told you exactly why but that that's desirable and it turns out when n becomes very very large you don't have uh, repetition okay so a formal way of writing it down is given l okay fix l uh there exists n large enough such that so that uh yeah probability of uh repetition okay let me just write it in terms of cycles length 2l cycle tends to i don't know it tends to zero i'll just say. you know what i mean okay so <clears throat> well you can show that the the yeah so yeah less than or equal to yeah less than or equal to all right so the way you show it is this probability will decrease exponentially in n okay, e power minus some n it will decrease okay so if you increase n very very make it very very large this probability will quickly go to zero okay and you can remember i have fixed l so you can keep on increasing l okay even if i make l 100 okay there is an n large enough so that you will not really see any repetition up to that that depth in your uh, in each bit node of it and okay so that's the, the that's a statement i mean again if i have to prove it it's a lot of combinatorics go back to some of the papers i'll, I'll give you references some good references where if you are interested you can see these proofs okay so it's possible to prove it and uh, we'll we'll just accept it as truth in this class okay so remember these results about the tana graph is very crucial and in the next class i'll describe a very simple decoder for ldpc codes for the binary symmetric channel and in analyzing that decoder we'll use many of these properties okay so that's what we'll do in the next class